All right, hello everybody. Uh, this uh, video lecture is on standards, protocols, and codes, uh, which are um, some ideas that are kind of hard to keep straight sometimes. So we'll see if we can do that. So a standard is a document. Uh, it's something written that defines uh, the characteristics of a product or process or a service. Um, so what does that mean? Um, it tells us uh, what some product might look like, right? What its shapes are, uh, uh, how to make it, uh, what it's made of, um, performance uh, characteristics like safety, how well it stands up to um, being smashed or being uh, heated up or uh, whatever. Uh, it might also tell us how to do something uh, the steps to follow in a process, um, and ultimately it also might tell us performance requirements. What is this? Uh, how fast is this car supposed to go, right? Uh, uh, how well, how many um, cycles is this food processor supposed to last? Uh, and these can be either voluntary or legally mandated. So a standard is a very broad category that, as we'll see, includes a lot of different kinds of descriptions of how a product or process should happen. Uh, and this purple guy, he's uh, <laughs> misunderstanding a little bit, but the basic idea, like your, your a standard tells us something we have to live up to, uh, a kind of minimum requirement that we're trying to meet. So there's uh, a lot of terms associated with standards, and so we want to talk a little bit about those. Um, a code is a, a set of rules uh, that's designed to protect public safety. And the most common ones of those are construction codes. So when you do some uh, remodeling of your home, uh, you need to make sure that you're, you're following code, uh, the following a set of standard ways of, of building to make sure that the house remains uh, safe. Um, an internal standard is a standard that uh, operates within a, a uh, organization or corporation or something like that um, that is used to describe how they do things okay within that particular organization and that might be for liability reasons or quality control or all sorts of uh, reasons and so that's a voluntary standard that's something that that organization decides to do on its own uh, protocol is just an, an active, uh, an action uh, related standard. So it's a description of how something, uh, some process is done. And this is particularly common in experimental protocols uh, because you want to make sure that if you have a, a test value, uh, that you can compare that to a test value that you did a year before or that somebody did across the country uh, and so forth. And so a protocol is a type of standard. Uh, a regulation or a regulatory standard is a standard that is part of the law, that you have to do this. Uh, and so you have those in uh, restaurant business, in uh, food preparation business, in the pharmacy business, and things like that, uh, where you have to actually follow something. Um, all of these different types of standards are worked on over time and oftentimes routinely reworked uh, as uh, situations develop. Um, but yes, basically they are all ways of telling you, <laughs> telling you what to do. All right, so why do we need the standards? Well, which is, we've mentioned a few of those things, but safety is a big one, right? So <clears throat> boiler in explosions were one of the things that uh, led to increased regulations, increased codes, increased standards. Uh, and there were a series of, just a couple examples here, because I have some nice pictures um, <laughs> here's the U.S. Uh, as Sultana burning uh, in uh, 1865. Here's the result of a boiler explosion in Massachusetts in 1905. These were major uh, disasters, right? A boiler, uh, especially at that time, uh, uh, worked under really high pressures. Uh, and when they exploded, uh, it would send that boiler like rocketing through the air, uh, which nobody wants. So as we move into the 20th century, you started to see uh, increased regulation 
in order to address some of these safety issues. So here's a little timeline. You, know, you can see ASME, the American Society for Mechanical Engineers, uh, was founded in 1880. Uh, by 1884, they're issuing uh, different standards um, for boilers. And you can see some of the other things that start to get regulated. Machine screw sizes, right? It's really useful that everybody makes the same screw with the same thread numbers um, per inch. Uh, some uh, cranes, elevators, boilers, public things that cause major disasters. Those are where, uh, where these standards started. And here up here, fewer explosions, right? We're more careful to follow uh, rules about how to build a boiler uh, and, it, and it helps everybody. Uh, the other side of safety is liability, right? So as liability laws um, uh, develop, they started to say, well, if you build a boiler and it explodes, you're responsible for some of the consequences of that. Uh, and so the law started to insist on that responsibility. Uh, and so again, it was an industry's uh, self-interest uh, to start to regulate how things were built and what processes were followed to make sure that uh, public safety was acknowledged. On the flip side of that, and these things all kind of work together, is the Engineering Code of Ethics, uh, which says that we are to hold paramount the safety, health, and welfare of the public. Right, so uh, liability is in our interest as engineers, uh, but it's also in the interest of the public uh, that we, you know, produce products that don't cause mass harm. <laughs> These things seem fairly, fairly straightforward, right? We can all agree on this. Uh, interoperability is another big thing that uh, encouraged the development of standards. Right, we want to be able to have things that work uh, together. So I mentioned bolt and screw sizes and threading, um, rail gauges, right? When railroads started in the mid 19th century, all of the different railroads, uh, railroad companies built their own rail uh, and they had different widths, right? Um, that doesn't help anybody. And after a while, you know, you. Uh, people started thinking, maybe we should talk to each other and just decide on how far apart our rails are. Um, material composition of things, plumbing fittings, computer fonts and typesetting, all of these things are things where it helps if people who are even competing against each other in the marketplace sort of agree, uh, this is how we're gonna do things uh, for our own benefit and for customers' benefit. And it's frustrating when that's not done, right? Um, the great uh, 80s example was the Betamax and uh, VHSs, uh, the different kinds of tapes to play back movies. Uh, and for a long time, both of those standards existed in the marketplace and you had to kind of decide which one you were gonna buy, which customers hated, uh, and then you have a limited uh, access to different movie titles. Anyway, standardization helps, right? It helps the customers and it uh, helps with efficiency. So interoperability, uh, and then finally, it allows people to sort of talk the same language. Um, if we all agree what, how we're gonna do a test on the strength of plastic, uh, then I can compare the plastic I make with the plastic somebody else makes. When I'm buying things, I can know that, okay, this measurement of plastic strength is the same measurement of plastic strength uh, from this other company. Uh, and then I'll be able to uh, utilize that information better. So that, that common language is really helpful. So safety, liability, interoperability, communication, all of these things uh, are helpful to the public and the manufacturer, uh, to the customer and to the person providing a service or a product. And that's why everybody loves uh, everybody loves standards and they're fun aren't they they're so fun it's fun to read standards all right so who makes those standards this is a, a kind of interested and complicated question um there's a, a a problem in that in creation of standards and that the people who are making them have to be the people who know what they're talking about right but oftentimes those people who know what they're talking about have a vested interest uh, and 
in what those standards are. And so uh, it's a lot of sort of push and pull between different parts of an industry, between government, between the public, about what should be included in uh, any set of standards. Uh, a lot of standards come from the federal government. Uh, we have a department of standards uh, in the US government, which is actually quite uh, significant uh, in size. Uh, there are standard development organizations, which include professional societies, trade associations, and actually testing organizations. You'll see, if you look at electronics, you'll see the abbreviation UL, uh, which is an uh, in indication that um, the standards being followed are uh, created by this uh, organization called Underwrite Laboratories. ASTM, American Society for Testing and Materials, you'll see that a lot on um, uh, standards as well. All right, and as a last thing, let's just talk uh, a little bit about um, standards used in practice and just to get a sense of how much uh, this uh, standards become a part of the manufacturing process. So we'll talk here about uh, the Harley V-Rod, which my brother-in-law has some patents on because uh, he worked for Harley. Uh, back in uh, the 1990s and 2000s. Um, and so that's my brother-in-law's motorcycle right there. Um, so what, let's think about uh, like a fuel tank. Something that seems really simple, simple right? Uh, but we gotta worry about um, toughness. You have to worry about fire safety, response to heat, uh, the degradation of the materials. You don't want the thing to, to rot or dissolve away. Uh, influx of contaminants. How do you keep things out of that fuel tank? All of these things are going to be uh, part of uh, the standards that um, uh, affect fuel tank, especially something like a fuel tank, which is, has significant safety concerns, right? Your fuel tank breaks, you're in trouble. So just, uh, you know, uh, give you a, a little sense of panic, you know, <laughs> let's look at some of the standards for a fuel tank. Um, you've got a... a standards about the kinds of materials that you can use to hold gasoline to make sure that those aren't uh, evaporating or leaking into the atmosphere. Uh, you've got an impact strength uh, standards that you have to follow. Uh, you have to worry about um, your plastics and how well they survive over time, especially with uh, heat and vibration. You've got a test that's going to test how um, strong uh, and dependable your curing process is for your plastic. Um, you've got a set of standards for how you're going to set up your bolts uh, um, and your bolt patterns so that you um, uh, can get standardized parts and make uh, the, the motorcycle less expensive. You've got standards for um, emissions um, to make sure that your the sending unit that's moving the gasoline into the um, parts where it explodes, <laughs> uh, that these aren't leaking um, or creating any kinds of uh, uh, emissions into the environment. You've got to make sure that your, uh, your electronics are not going to be um, uh, boogered up by dust and dirt over time. And so there are standards about how to do that. So you've just got a lot of things that you uh, um, have to keep track of and um, <laughs> you do you do want to you, you want to be an engineer and the reason uh, is that this isn't quite as uh, as overwhelming as it might look part of it is is that a lot of this is going to be built into institutional knowledge so it's not like you're going to start building a gas tank and nobody else uh, at Harley is going to know uh, what the standards are for o-rings and gas tanks and you're going to have to look it all up a lot of that's going to be institutional knowledge uh, that you can use. Um, but you do want to keep those things in mind, right? You want to kind of think about when you're making something, environmental standards, safety concerns, internal company, testing standards. Those are things that you want to be aware of uh, when you're involved in a, in a particular industry. Um, and partly because those are for your personal benefit. They protect you from liability. Uh, but they also make you a better engineer, an ethical engineer, uh, uh, and one that's existing within this long history of engineers who have thought about safety uh, and standardization for a long time. 
um, and you want to use that knowledge uh, as best you can. And so here, to close, here's a little picture of my brother-in-law, Rob, uh, riding off uh, on his V-Rod. Um, he had like four V-Rods at, <laughs> at one point. Harley had this program where you could uh, have one for a year and trade it back in if you were uh, uh, one of the engineers. And so he, was, he always had a different bike. Anyway, okay, so that's one advantage of working for Harley. Uh, great, and that is on it on standards uh, and protocols.